welcome everybody to the Father's house. Oh, why don't you first bump people around you as you take your seat. Thank you, worship team. It is so good to be here today. And we're so excited for those who's going to be baptized. And we're so excited for Easter season that's coming. And I want to take literally, I've got 12 minutes, I believe. Um, and let's see if 12 minutes is even possible. Yeah, you all go like, oh Lord, don't even try. <laughs> there we go. You know what is so fascinating about where we live? Is that we more than anybody else on the planet understand seasons. Where I grew up, they say, my mom speak to every Tuesday. She says, oh, winter is here. I go, what's the temperature? Oh, it's 64. <laughs> I go, how do you know it's winter then? Oh, I can feel it in the air. There is no fall, there is no winter. It is all a matter of a temperature change of about 15 degrees. But we know here in Rochester, New York, that seasons change. And you can only live here when you begin to not hate seasons, but inhabit seasons. Now what is so interesting, yesterday, I was so convinced that spring is here that I opened my pool. I'm like, it's open. Now you can't throw a snow. What is happening? It, it is so amazing because when spring comes, there's certain things that tells you spring is coming. I've got all these bulbs that I've planted, and you know what? I'm not delusional. Those little sprouts are jumping through the surface, and I say, there's sprouts, the pool's going open. I don't care. It is, and, and, and you know on your list for springs, you're going to clean the gutters. You're going to clean the debris. You're going to get your garden ready. You're going to prune. There's things to be done in order for for things to become in order to be in the season and be transformed by the beauty of the season. And when winter comes and you live in denial, um, you are going to run into the problems of not doing the winter things to just accept that winter is coming, right? You've got to put these things on the outside faucets and you've got to close the pool and you've got to and then it's so beautiful because in the summer we are out and then then comes winter uh, we've never been so close so tucked in watched so many Netflix movies and picked up so much weight oh it's beautiful it's just so gorgeous but the reason why I want to talk to you about seasons and why seasons are so important because you see, we are living in a time right now where we are entering the season of Easter. And I don't think ever in, in my lifetime has Easter given us such a pivotal invite that is so important because we've never been slammed in a season and a time. We call it the pandemic. But soon we discovered the pandemic has many factors. The disease was only one. The pandemic of mistrust, division, defamation, disorientation, and disruption has left us absolutely frozen and in indifference. We are tired. We don't believe anybody anymore. We are not even disappointed by the things that would have disappointed us. And I think if there is ever a time that people are reevaluating re even their faith and experience in God, it is now. The thing that makes me so happy that our God is never nervous when his people are seeking afresh. And I want to say to those of you sitting with Christian, a faith, a, questions about your faith, it is not a sign that you're losing your faith. It is an invite to finding it in a whole different way again. 
That's why I don't see it as something different. The one I love about the young generation, they are the early ones that see that something is no longer working and they want to disconnect and discover. And I want to read to you a scripture that is so beautiful in the book of Jeremiah 6.16. Can, can you read the scripture out loud with me? It says, stand at the crossing and consider the ancient path. For it's good and it leads to me. Walk on this path and you will find rest for your soul. Come on. Can who in this place say, man, if I can just find rest for my soul again. Firm faith assurance again. And the interesting thing is that I want to deposit to you today. We live in a time and an age of information. It, it has become so interesting um, how much information is pouring into our world, but I want you to write this down. Faith is not a product of agreeing with somebody's philosophy around anything. Because if I look at faith, for me, it's, it's like love. L let me explain it this way. Um, I have two adult children. If there's any uh, law that I wish they would change or a law that... I wish they would bring in, and it's the law of prearranged marriages. Come on, all the parents, they go like, Shh, yeah. How about I pick him? Because the one you bring home, I one look and I go like, oh, he's voted off, right? Because as a parent, you look for something and you've got an eye because you know what forever means and but yet even if you choose the person you cannot make love happen and I can tell you this more than anything even if you choose Christ you cannot make loving Christ happen and I think more than anything the world is wanting to give us more information about who God is and who he is not. And I think this Easter is an invitation not only to discover him, but to encounter his love for yourself in a significant way. That's why I love what Caroline said. This Easter is for you. This Easter is a personal invite for you. And I think what the danger is, is that we are so exhausted and exasperated that we think if we can just dress up, come to Easter, go to the family dinner, then Easter is past. And can I tell you, could it be that this Easter is not about the information, but an encountering the resurrection of Jesus Christ in a whole new personal way? Because you see, here is something interesting. There are two words, three words really, that I want to um, invite you to understand. There is a word embodiment. Now, the best way I can describe, I try to find, I can give you the a definition of embodiment because it is not a mental thing. It is a whole being thing, embodiment of something. Um, and, and an embodiment, I, I thought, what is a seasonal thing of a picture that will explain to you what embodiment is. And I, I found this picture of somebody putting logs on a fire. Especially for those of you who have um, fireplaces in your home and you keep your house warm with fire, you know it takes hard work to chop the wood, get the wood. Um, I had a guy delivered wood one day and I paid, and when I got home, there's a mountain of wood, and I go like, why didn't they tell me I should pay for stack the wood when you dump the wood? Because now who's going to do this, right? Because it is work, and it takes an, an embodiment for you to have a vision of what the moment of transformation in front of the fire can bring. Embodiment is when you choose to put your hands on the things and bring yourself into proximity to create the thing that's going to lead to transformation. Because you see, I believe stacking the wood, embodying what can bring transformation leads us to the second word, and that's identification. Now, the, the word identification 
is not to feel for something or understand the best picture that I have of identification. Who of you know the feeling by the fire when the, everything has gone quiet in the house? You sit there with your Christmas socks, you smell a burn in the house, but you refuse to move your lazy feet. And all of a sudden, the fire is no longer in the fireplace. Now the fire has slowly crept into your soul. In other words, you, your heart beats slower. Your anxious thoughts become quiet. Because the very thing that you embodied now becomes the thing that you identify with because your proximity to the embodiment has now created the pathway for your soul to become listening, hearing. Time slows down. And Father's house, can I tell you something, beautiful people? Speed destroys our love for Jesus quicker than you can ever imagine. I believe with all of my heart, many of you are worried about your marriage. There's nothing wrong with your marriage. You're just not making time for each other. You've chosen to run at a speed where there is no room because you cannot love in a hurry. You can't, you can't get close if you say, I have two minutes. So what do you want? What do you want? Just tell me what you want. It is time. Because remember when you loved how time stood still? Remember the phone bills? Remember you were six and a half hours on the phone with someone you loved? And you said nothing. All you do is say, breathe, baby. Let me just hear you breathe. I've never heard such a beautiful breath in my life. Because time stands still when love creeps in. But I believe that there is a next step to this. And the picture that I have for transformation is when we become reflective in the place of embodiment and identification. You say, Pastor P, what does it mean? You, you know, when you sit in front of that fire and, and all the, the busyness of life, have you ever been in front of a place where you go like, I can die right now because it's only downhill from now. It's Monday, it's coming, I, I don't want to move. And when you sit there, you begin to see your soul different, your life different, your, your reflection, your understanding. And it all happens when you get the fire, you make the fire, you sit by the fire, and you sit there long enough until your soul begins to hear and speak to you. Now, why am I sharing this with you? Because you see, I believe with all of my heart that Paul, he was an apostle. And when you read all of his writings, it's so po potent and powerful. Yet one of the most, one of the, I don't want to say the most potent. Uh, one of the, when you read Paul getting old, Paul says, you know, I was this and I can be this. And don't forget what I did. And everything that Paul achieved, he wrote this. He says, my greatest desire, come on, so that I may know him. You know, the knowing is not an inf informational know, it's an intimate knowledge. You cannot know any person intimately by Googling them. You cannot read a letter that I wrote and say, I intimately know him. Spending time, my wife intimately knows me and I intimately know her. That is why they say so often when your marriage are struggling, one of the biggest gifts you can do is go back to the places, the very place where you saw each other for the first time. Go back to that tree where you snuck a kiss for the first time. Take the pilgrimage back to discover the beauty of allowing those moments to enter again. Because you see, Paul says that I may know him and experientially 
right? Is that close enough? Sounds German to me, but anyway, becoming more thoroughly acquainted with him, understanding the remarkable wonders of his person more completely. In other words, Paul says, knowing him has got so much more that you can encounter that say, I believe in God, I believe in Jesus. He died and he rose from the dead. He says, and in that same way, experience, experience, experience the power of his resurrection, which flows, overflows, and is active in believers, and that I may share the fellowship of his suffering, and in that same way, experience the power, oh, I've already read that, by being continually conformed inwardly into his likeness, even to his death, dying as he did. Oh, I love this. So that I may attain the resurrection that is will raise me from the dead. Now listen, believe it or not, I'm done. Anaji, D, D Anaji, D. Andre Crouch was one of, one of the most prolific writers of gospel music. He has this song, because I, I believe you're sitting in church here today because you love Jesus. Some of the people around you may not think it. They think you are here because you were forced to. You said yes because you want to keep the relationship going. You said yes. You have a tough exterior with a lot of questions. I promise you, you would not be sitting here if there's not something in your heart. And as your pastor, I can tell you this, that I believe years and years and years we invited the world to come experience Easter. But this season, God is inviting us first before we bring the world. And He wants us to embody and identify so that we can experience the wonder of his person. So Ulrich Crouch did the song, Take me back, take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. Take me back, oh, take me back, Dear Lord, where I first believe. Come and sing it with me. You know the song. Take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, to the place, to the place where I first received you. Oh, take me back. Take me back. Oh, Jesus. Take me back, dear Lord, where I first believe. This Easter is a pilgrimage. It's a pilgrimage for the stations of the cross for you to come and say, God, would you encounter me and take me back? I remember the one year I walked through this and come into this room, there was a 45-foot cross and it invited you to take a hammer and a nail and nailed it to the cross. Scripture says, the sin that I committed, Christ nailed to the cross. The hammering that happened, every blow, was staring at my soul in gratitude. And church, I ask you that this year especially, that you push the world outside for this next Easter season, that you gather those who need hope, and you don't take the pilgrimage for others you take it for you and you say Jesus that I may know you 
that I may love you, that I may encounter you, that I may see you with my eyes open. That that song, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Because if He doesn't open our eyes, church, then our relationship with Him may be one of mental remembrance, but soul separation. Because there is no way that I, in a million years, can give you an encounter with Jesus. Because He is the encounter that awaits for me. And awaits for you. So we're going to sing the song "Take Me Back," and I'm going to ask Caroline to come up because today we're going to celebrate. And I'm going to ask that you remain in your seats. We've got two baptismals. It's going to go quick. I've kept my promise. Not five minutes over. It's still a miracle. While they get ready, I would love just to read to you. You know, we started a campus in the Albion Women's Penitentiary. We went once, and then COVID hit. This past week is the first time that we were allowed to send our Sunday message in. We are not allowed to go yet. This is what I have. I want to reach out. Tonight went extremely well. The invitation to attend was sent, and 30 women attended. Regardless of the size, the message was received, and the service clearly spoke to all who attended. The gymnasium was filled with music and worship in a way we haven't seen in the last two years. Thank you for providing this gift, this service. We are looking forward to bridging the gap until we see the Father's house in our prison again. That's how I want to encourage you. Don't leave today without giving, because giving is part of our discipleship. You say, Pastor Pierre, I have a problem with giving. Give the smallest amount that you feel is not a problem. But as disciples of Christ, generosity is becoming like Jesus. Let's celebrate life change right now. So church, today we get to witness those who we sit with every Sunday make a life decision. And those of you who are getting ready to get baptized, you can go ahead and get in the pool. I just want to quickly read a scripture to help us understand the significance of this moment. This is from Romans 6. Since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised to life as he was. We know that our own sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. And since we died with Christ, we know we will also live with him. So over every person getting baptized today, we speak over you that the same Holy Spirit that descended upon Jesus, as he came out of the water and said, this is my son who am well pleased, we declare the same truth over you. Over here we have Timothy Moss, and he's choosing to be baptized to say today because he says, I want to live the life God has made for me. Samuel Bird, who writes, I'm getting baptized to become closer to God.
We want to celebrate Raylan Moss. She says she wants, uh, she's getting baptized today to have Jesus as my best friend. We welcome Brian Short, who writes, For the glory of God's kingdom, which is the kingdom, and the kingdom that I work hard for each and every day, through his love and prosperity in my heart. Gail uh, Romagnola, she says, even though I was baptized as a child, I want to be baptized of my own willing consent, embracing Jesus. Kiara McMillan, who writes, I want to recommit myself to God. I want to be closer. I want him in my family, my marriage, and everything around me. I want to feel his love. We celebrate Aaliyah Kralik. She says, my faith is personal but not private. I have committed to Jesus uh, internally and I'm ready to commit publicly by the decision of my own and nobody else. Andre Britt, Kiera's son, who writes, I want to be closer with God. We celebrate Ruth Simmons, who says, God is a God of forever second chances, but at some point as his daughter, I have to make the right decisions on my own. This is one step of many in the right direction. This is me telling God thank you. who writes, my heart belongs to Jesus. We celebrate Quinn Green, who says, I want to be baptized because I feel like I would be closer to God. Gasson, I want to completely and totally surrender my life to Jesus. Avery Green, I want to learn more about God and be closer to him. Kayla McKee. 
key. I want to be closer to my Lord and Savior. We celebrate Ashley DiPietro who says, I've seen God move in incredible ways in my life. And this is my next step to show my thankfulness. with God and to learn from him. So church, we want to thank you so much for just being here. What a great reminder that we are a part of the body of Christ. There's power when we celebrate one another, when we honor one another. So thank you for being here, whether in the room or online. For those of you that are young adults or young professionals, we're doing a meetup today after service. We're on one o'clock at Ferraris. We'd love to see you there. <laughs> Uh, and if you are interested in serving an Easter in any way, any capacity, stop on over to the tables after service. We'd love to help get you signed up. Have a great rest of your day. <laughs>